sheet metal. This here, this is a 4,000 watt laser. This was installed in December. I had a, a, uh, a model laser here that was facing this way when you were here last time. That one sold it to someone because it's slow. Put this one in. This one does flats and tubing. This allows us to burn every one of these holes without ever touching the tube. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but why would you want to? That's why I had him bring that. That is how we're going to start building our machines. We're starting to implement parts of it now, but within a year, our chassis and everything will lock together with male-female parts. You can't mess up. As a welder, what if you turn the part over and the bolt holes are here instead of here? That's, that's a mess up. You can't do it with something like this because it interlocks one way, I'll show you. You can only do this with this kind of laser. So now, because I can, I'm rotating the tube and I can cut on the rotation, I can make male females that interlock in. Now when I weld that, I don't even need to jig it. And the, and the integrity of the part second to none. This is a 4,000 watt laser. And what it's doing is cutting out the parts. As you can see, we minimize absolute our scrap. And you know what that part is? Oh. And the flip up. It's, we, uh, it's nickel plated on the sides. That's when you flip your front screen holder up. That's the lock that the pin snaps into. So it'll cut that whole plate. Now when we're not doing flat stock on this machine, it'll actually be tubing, and that's back here. Twenty-four foot tubing rolls in, goes in automatically, and it will cut it to length, rotate it, cut the edges, do everything, and go and shoots out the other side. You now have a part that's absolute with no human touches, and it makes it dead on. For welding, everything else is better. Here's a high-speed aluminum saw. Hey, he'll program his cuts. So here's a screen holder for a graphics press. Here's the barcode to tell you how many you need. We can tell you how long it took to cut it. How long it took to walk it over here to be cut, how many pieces we cut, and how does it match what our paperwork says? Because there'll be a ticket that goes along with every part. Now what he does here, he'll do an automatic cut. And the cut on here, he can hold two thousandths on the aluminum on a cut. Your hair is two to three thousand. your cut. No machining needed and it's going to be within the tolerance. Every machine here is on a PM program and so each machine has a number and the number tells uh, it's got a history of when the oil needs to be changed, when the filters need to be changed, etc. So that keeps us going on uh, longevity of the machine because downtime is one of the most expensive things you can have. These two machines came in in December because of the uh, life expectancy of my the machine. I buy life expectancy is like 20, 30 years. Me, seven to 10, gotta go. Because technology will supersede. 
I will even sell it to my competition at that point. I'd want them to buy it. You can see the speed of the milling head cutting material. That increased by 40%, because, uh, sorry, 20%, because this was a uh, 8,000 RPM spindle on the machines that were here in December. That's now a 10,000. There's your tool change. That increased by 40%. So as my labor costs go up, the only thing I can do to compensate is automate and get as much of that time out as possible. So I literally take man hours out, so that covers material costs and labor costs that increase up until a point, and then you have to do an increase. Thank <laughs> you.